The aliens are not the only strangers on our planet. Some fallen angels, with their descendants, live among us. Don't be surprised by that, because the Nephilim are closer to you than you can ever imagine. Although some may dismiss the stories about the Nephilim and the fallen angels as myths, the fact that these stories are recorded in the Bible confirms that these are more than mere myths. The Bible tells us the devil was cast out of heaven to earth for perpetrating evil. Interestingly, there were also some angels taken away from earth for their wickedness. What do you think they could have done to suffer a worse fate than the devils? Are they still alive? Stick around to the end to find out the shocking revelations about the location of these fallen angels and their offspring. Yes, you heard that right. They procreated. It started in Genesis 6 verses 1 through 4. In this particular passage, the Bible introduces us to a captivating story involving celestial beings known as the Watchers, or fallen angels, whom God sent to earth on a special mission. But if you want to dive deep into the juicy details, you'll need to turn to the first book of Enoch, which provides a comprehensive analysis of what went down between these Watchers and the daughters of men. But let's look at what Genesis 6 verses 1 through 4 says about the Watchers. When man began to multiply on the face of the land, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of man were attractive, and they took as their wives any they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh. His days shall be 120 years. Here the sons of God were the angels sent to earth, but the Bible recorded they mingled with the daughters of man and bore children to them, which means their offspring have been in existence right from the beginning. The Watchers were angels sent to earth to watch over humanity. However, they lost their sense of purpose, and the desire of mortal women consumed them. Their fall from grace occurred when they abandoned their divine assignment and instead lusted after human women. This departure from their angelic nature and duties is why they are called fallen angels. Their unholy union with women led to the birth of a strange species of humans called the Nephilim. The term Nephilim means the fallen ones. Due to their mixed heritage of both angels and humanity, some interpretations suggest that the motivation for this disobedience was to establish a name for themselves among humans. They coveted a place in human society and craved power and influence across generations. This ambition drove them to seek offspring who would bear their likeness and carry on their legacy. The devil might have had a hand in all of this too. He was hell-bent on sabotaging God's grand plan. Remember, God said that the woman's offspring would crush the devil's head. Perhaps he cooked up a scheme to corrupt the woman's offspring by recruiting and manipulating these angels and steering them away from their divine duties, just like he did to Eve. Instead of facing their responsibilities on earth, they ended up lusting after human women, which only added to the chaos. God didn't hesitate to punish these angels. Jude 1 verse 6 says, And the angels who did not stay within their position of authority, but left their proper dwelling, he has kept in eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day. He locked up these angels to prevent them from wreaking more havoc on mankind. You may ask, if these fallen angels are locked up, what of their offspring, the Nephilim? Are they also bound in chains? While their fathers were locked up, the children suffered a different fate. Back in the days before before the flood, things were pretty rough. The Nephilim invaded everywhere with their evil acts, and people had to battle evil forces day in and day out. The few righteous people of that era had it tough, with their souls constantly vexed by the prevailing evil. During this chaotic time, God decided to clean up the earth with a big flood. You're familiar with the famous story, right? The devastating flood wiped out everything on earth except Noah and everything with him in his ark. But did they perish in the flood? Well, well, after the flood, things took a different turn. You see, the Nephilim were a peculiar breed. They were hybrid beings, which explained their extraordinary growth, superhuman abilities, and unfortunately, their immortality. When the floodwaters receded and their bodies were no more, the Nephilim, being non-human, couldn't follow the same path as human souls after death. So they hung around the earth as spirits, unable to live like humans anymore. Instead of staying silent, these Nephilim spirits began searching for human bodies they could inhabit to continue their influence on earth. Now you might be wondering, did they succeed? 
You bet they did, and they didn't have to look far to find suitable hosts. They entered people like Noah. Don't let that surprise you. Before the flood, Noah was known as a righteous man, even amidst the surrounding evil. But right after the flood, something unexpected happened. He planted a vineyard and ended up drinking so much that he got completely drunk, and it didn't stop there. Due to his drunkenness, he cursed his son's son and the upcoming generations. So the Nephilim are still out there, seeking bodies to inhabit and exerting their evil influence over each generation. Look at Saul, the first king of Israel. He was a young man who had no business with being a king, but God chose him. Shortly after, his disobedience led him out of God's will. He became a shadow of his former self. He was bloodthirsty, power-seeking, and disobedient to God. All these traits relate to the habits of these Nephilims. While he was physically huge, he was also possessed by those spirits. The Bible mentioned that an evil spirit entered him. He got so evil evil that when the spirit took over him, he could do nothing. He almost smote his son with a javelin due to the influence of that evil spirit. In the Bible, particularly Luke 8 and Mark 5, there's an account of Jesus casting out a legion of demons from a man outside the city. There are other cases in the Bible of evil spirits taking over human bodies. Before dismissing these points as vague assumptions, it is worth noting that a few accounts from one of the removed books of the Bible recount a peculiar event that took place before the flood. During that period, marked by widespread evil and demonic atrocities, a man named Methuselah reportedly killed 900,000 of these demons known as Nephilim. Some Bible theologians speculate that this act could have inadvertently unleashed their spirits, allowing them to keep spreading evil in the world. Those Nephilim are the ones stirring up violence, wars, and all that is rampant evil in the world. And guess what? They haven't taken a break and might be closer to you than you'd ever think. They're the culprits behind those bizarre desires and lustful urges. They're also behind some peculiar appetites and that loss of control when people get under the influence of not-so-great things. It's all part of their mischievous plan. They're everywhere, from sports to fashion, music to movies, medicine to academics, and every nook and cranny of society. Their goal is to establish their wicked dominion and influence over humanity. Some folks even think this stems from jealousy and anger towards humans. They wanted what we have, bodies, so they're on a mission to take over human vessels and spread evil like wildfire. Their objective to dominate humanity doesn't exactly align with God's original plan. God created humans to have dominion over everything on earth, even in heaven. But these beings want to flip the script and control everything themselves. Do you think they're winning? Absolutely not. They're not winning. However, some people associate exceptionally strong, tall, fast, or intelligent individuals with possible offspring of the Nephilim. The Bible references the Nephilim in Numbers 13, verse 33, and other parts of the Bible. These might not necessarily be direct descendants of the offspring of these fallen angels. It's possible that the reference to Nephilim in the book of Numbers could have been symbolic or used to describe intimidating inhabitants of Canaan, rather than literal descendants of the pre-flood Nephilim. This might have been a way to convey the challenges and obstacles that the Israelites would face when entering the promised land. Indeed, the giants in Canaan, such as the famous Goliath, were formidable figures. Goliath's challenge to the Israelites was not only a physical threat, but also symbolized opposition to the people and purposes of God. Much like the ancient Nephilim, he might just be a giant body that the actual Nephilim possessed. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment with your thoughts on the topic. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more mind-blowing biblical mysteries. See you soon!